Hi everybody, it's Dara. And I'm really excited to share with you today a recipe that's really easy to make. It's clean cooking and it's a version of ratatouille, the really fast version. Like if you're hungry and you've got some vegetables and you want to make it to eat now. Because I'm going to do it in a saucepan. If you want to make more, you do it in a larger pot. So I have cabbage and zucchini or squash, eggplant, red pepper, and I have carrots. You could add them or not add them. And I have cherry tomatoes. I'm going to keep the beets away. Garlic is good here. Thyme and garlic and thyme, those are both very good. I happen to only have garlic. I have fresh garlic and salt. And the number one ingredient for cooking your vegetables, if you want to cook them, is to use an oil that is healthy to use. And coconut oil is, doesn't change its structure and so doesn't do damage to your body. So we're going to use coconut oil. Uh, olive oil is a great oil, but not to heat. So I am wanting to tell you that the reason that this recipe is so good is because it's heartwarming, it's nurturing. I love cooked eggplant. I like all these other vegetables raw, but I do like my eggplant cooked. And it is so important to nurture ourselves. So those of us who are getting stuck in a raw food, uh, dogmatic way of life, we need to be able to flex and bend. And there are days that are cold and there are nights that are cold. And there's sometimes where our body just doesn't want the raw food. So it's good to know how to prepare something. There's two things I've been doing lately. This ratatouille style dish and also a soup. And I'm going to share that um, a different day because today is ratatouille day. So I am going to, um, the onions go first and then the red pepper. And when you're making a large pot of ratatouille, the vegetables need to be cooked separately. Um, because all together they won't fit in the pot. Once they reduce down, then you put them all together and you mix them. So for example, the onions and red pepper would be cooked. Then add an, and another, then you put them in a, a bowl. Then the zucchini would be cooked or the squash would be cooked in a pan with olive oil cubed up and kind of browned a little bit. And then you would do the cabbage and the eggplant, and then you'd put them all together, and, and for an hour or so, the, the flavors meld. But for purposes of being hungry and wanting to eat right away, there's absolutely nothing wrong with chopping the onions, doing the red pepper, then adding in little pieces of squash. Um, if, feel free to brown the squash in another pan if you want to. I don't always do that, and that's fine. So um, I didn't add eggplant uh, cabbage recently, so I'm going to try a little bit. It will make it a little watery. So we're going to do the easy version. Why not? I want you guys to check out a video on Poppy, Poppy and Seed. It's an amazing pop publication for self-betterment. And um, I want to cut the onion first. And so we did an interview. I did an interview with Nikki and my friend David uh, filmed it. Um, and it's an article on decluttering and I'm going to make a clarification on specifics of decluttering any minute because many of you have questions <laughs> about, you know, it, there's really decent questions about what do you let go of and how do you let go of it. And also a really good one that just came in in an email was what do you do if um, your partner, someone you're living with, does not want to get rid of their stuff and that's a great question. So I'm going to touch upon that and much more. Um, I'm going to definitely do that, maybe even next, while the ratatouille is cooking. It takes so quick. This is like, it cooks really quickly. So you cover it, um, add a little water in the pot, cover it, it all goes together and you could eat it quickly. It's nice to eat on top of um, cauliflower rice. And for those of you who do like rice, you can have it on top of rice. You could also have a rice cauliflower mixture. Um, so there we go. We have the onions. Eggplant gets mushy, so you want to cut it large enough if you're going to be cooking it a long time. If you're cooking it quickly and you need it quickly, then you cut it smaller. But you really can't go wrong. All these veggies together with garlic and salt and coconut oil, it's not going to be bad. And thyme if you have it. I think I do have some thyme. I've got thyme. I've got all the thyme in the world. 
I'm happy to be back making videos, you guys. I missed you. I just had some stuff going on. You can find out about it on More With Dara. And I just, I just had to go through what I went through. So, as we all do as humans, and I'm showing up anyway. Okay, I'm gonna put the coconut oil. And then I'll fast forward through the cutting and show you uh, what I'm up to. Just a tablespoon or two. Saute. I saute the onions and I'll saute the zucchini. That's two tablespoons. And then once they're kind of not brown, we don't want to brown the onions. We just want to really like cook them a bit. Then like translucent, lucent. And then I'll add just a little bit of water to kind of steam the rest of the veggies. Here I go. Okay, that's what we have going on so far. I take my wooden, oop, wooden spoon and mix it up. Once the onions are translucent a little bit, I'll add, I'll add the zucchini stand, the squash. I keep calling it zucchini. Okay, I wanna talk about the eggplant really quickly. When I roast an eggplant, which you can see on this, I made Bengen Barta, and you can see on this channel how to roast an eggplant. Usually what you need to do is salt the eggplant to squeeze the moisture out. That also takes the bitterness out. But I made eggplant yesterday and all I did was cut it up into cubes and I added it to this dish and it was delicious. So you don't have to do that extra step. If you're roasting it, I would say yes. But for this, no, I don't believe you have to. Some people peel and some people salt and squeeze. <laughs> We're not gonna do that today because I do like everything so easy and fast. So. It's a beautiful day as you can see. Back to it. I also have to say that when you make, like let's say you're having someone over for dinner and you have the smell of onions and garlic on the stove, it just feels like instant love. So there's a lot of times I just do that, onions and garlic, and put that over chopped kale, just for the smell of it. Okay, I've chopped the garlic. I'm using three cloves for this one. It's really serving just a couple people, so I <laughs> think that's fine. Um, but use it to taste as you wish, and for sure garlic powder is great too. Okay, so I had to add water last time I made it, but this time I'm using a lot of squash, and as you can see, it's sweating itself out, and it's adding water to the dish, so we may not even need to add water. Okay, now we have the red pepper. Okay, so it really does depend on the size of your veggies and how much you're using. So that squash was rather large and I still have cabbage and eggplant to go, which I normally don't use cabbage, I'm gonna try it. So what I'm going to do is take the opportunity to use this pot to cook the eggplant. Yes, that's what I'm gonna do, so that will cook. Then I'll cook the eggplant, then I'll mix them all together in this pot. This is an Emil Henry clay pot and I love it. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. I wanna give you some variations, right? You, if you don't have cabbage, don't use it. You definitely need the eggplant for this dish. Um, and it's going to last. So if you do make a big pot, it's gonna last three to five days in the refrigerator. Also, um, you can freeze it, which I don't freeze things really, but you can if you made too much. So this is a great thing to do if you have a lot of end of the summer vegetables. Back to the stove. It's cabbage time. It's that big one. And I'll add the tomatoes in towards the end. <laughs> okay. Keep an eye on the stove. You know, most of you know, I, ha I was raw for, um, like, almost 100% raw for 11 years. Then I went to London, I was raw. Then I went to Paris and I was semi-raw. And then I went to India 
and I definitely ate cooked food and I came home having so much fun with the spices and okay I guess we'll do a little more we don't have to do we could do a little more cabbage thank you bye we just had some fixins in the house so this is a great dish to make in advance. Let's say you're having a friend come, like I am tomorrow, my friend Brooks is visiting, and I could have ratatouille for him. So I'm just gonna keep chopping <laughs> veggies and stew it and get it all together, and then you put it in a Pyrex container in the refrigerator, and you heat it up when you need to heat it up. And so you always have something, some clean cooking for yourself. Um, you really can't go wrong. Sometimes I add uh, black pepper, Gives it like a kick. I've added ginger. Um, I have a fatali pepper, which is super spicy and lends so much flavor. So if you like a little bit of heat, you can do that. Okay, look at that. It's sizzling. It's gonna be on a medium heat, medium to low heat, stir and check it. And obviously we're gonna cover it. And I do keep checking on it. How much salt? Add salt to your own taste. Sometimes you want more, sometimes you want less, and it depends how many veggies you use. Okay, it would be better if I had more tomatoes, but this is what I have, which is meant to encourage you that no matter what, even if you don't have the perfect ingredients, we have to learn how to chop veggies and feed ourselves and flavor balance and know that it doesn't have to be perfect or just like I did it, you can do your own thing. That's the beauty. So if you notice that there's not enough water at the bottom, we can add, you know, a little quarter, cu half cup of water. Water. Okay, so for the other pan, it would have taken really quickly. Add less water than I did. I didn't need to add um, a whole half cup because it looks like the veggies are cooking down, but we'll see. It's gonna be great either way. It's like a stew. <laughs> or um, if you add less water, it is more ratatouille-ish, but I think it's gonna be delicious either way. So now you know how I play with clean cooking and it's so colorful it's like a rainbow and don't worry you really can't mess it up so for the other pan you cook 15 20 minutes half hour this one is going to be i'm going to keep it on a low for like an hour okay so here's the beautiful dish it's been cooking for about an hour it's done and i would add way less water if you are using moist ve vegetables like my squash way less and what can i tell you it's delicious. I would like more garlic, so I'm gonna add garlic powder. And I hope you make this nurturing dish, and you can't go wrong, because even if it's a little wick, wicklity, <laughs> liquidy, you could put it over rice, or cauliflower rice, or just enjoy it, like a soup, stew, ratatouille. So bon appetit, everybody, and get your greens on, and I will see you soon. I just have to show you. Seriously, I tasted it again, and it's amazing because the heat, just a little tip of the fatali pepper, use habanero, whatever you have, or a little cayenne, it just makes it burst with flavor. So you don't need a lot of oil. There's two tablespoons of oil for this whole thing. You could even use one if you wanted. Um, it's a little hot, but yeah, if it gets liquidy, it's just like a soup, no big deal, but it's absolutely delicious, I have to say. I would cut the zucchini, the squash, did it again, a little smaller. It's too hot, I'll wait. You'll trust me, it's delicious. Try it at home, love you guys. Now I'm gonna go edit it. But seriously, check out the poppy and seed um, video that I did, I think you're gonna like it. And then um, if you comment below it, I can answer those questions in the next video. So go to poppyandseed.com. Mm -hmm.